Why are moving charges interested in the news? Because they wanted to know about the current affairs. Currents, or at least electrical currents, are just moving charges. And things that can be considered as occurrence are things like lightning, or whatever the hell is going on in electrolysis, and the example that most people are probably familiar with, the movement of electrons through a circuit. Now usually in physics, the direction of current is set to be the direction of the positive charges movement. So when we have an electrical current like this, and we have the electrons moving in this direction, it's sort of like saying the positive charge will be moving in this direction, and hence we say that our current will be moving around in this direction. And so that's basically all we have to know about current. Now let's do something slightly interesting with it. Now suppose I have a piece of wire here which I connected to a battery so that there's a current running in this direction. And I have another piece of wire really close to it which is also connected to another battery so that its current is running in this direction. Question time, what's going to happen to these two wires? Number one, nothing's going to happen because why should anything even happen to these two wires? Or the second choice, nothing's probably going to happen because what can these two wires do that will make it any interesting? Pick an answer now. You have an answer? Well, you're probably wrong because it turns out that when you have these two wires with currents in these directions near each other, the two wires tend to attract each other and want to move closer together, which is actually very interesting. And it also turns out that if I reverse the currents in one of these wires, it turns out that these two wires also want to repel each other, want to move away from one another as well, which is even more interesting. So it turns out that when we have two wires next to each other with a current running through it, it sort of wants to interact with each other, exerting some sort of force on it. And it turns out it doesn't just happen between two wires carrying a current. It can also happen between a wire and just a moving charge. This thing here is called a cathode ray tube and what it can do is it can fire electrons from one side to the other like this. Now if I take a piece of wire like before and carry some current through it, it turns out that our electron gets deflected like this. So somehow there is a force now exerted upon the electrons and we figured that it must be somehow coming from the wire that's carrying the current that's near it. But what exactly is happening here? Well, it turns out that when we have a wire and we have a current running through our wire, it is able to exert a force upon nearby charges, particularly nearby moving charges. And this force here is something called the magnetic force. And when we have a magnetic force, we're probably going to have some sort of a magnetic field as well. So somehow when we have a current carrying wire, there will be some sort of a magnetic field associated with it, which allows it to exert forces on moving charges. So let's define this magnetic field. Through all the different experiments we carry out, we come up to a nice expression which we can probably use to express the force acting on a moving charge. We can say that when we have a moving charge and we have some sort of a current carrying wire with a magnetic field nearby, we can say that the force on our moving charge can be expressed as the amount of charge that we have times the velocity that the charge is moving at cross the magnetic field. And the magnetic field that is caused by our wire here will just be defined whatever so that this expression makes sense according to experiments. It's also worth mentioning this symbol right here. This is not just any old multiplication sign, this is what we call the cross product. It's a nice little thing you can do to vectors. What it basically is, is that if we have two vectors and we were to find the cross product between these two vectors, the resulting vector that we get will be at right angles to both of these vectors. And it's worth talking a little bit about something called the right hand rule, which is a nice way of working out the direction of the vector that comes out of the cross product. Suppose you have these two vectors and you want to find the cross product between these two vectors. What you can do is you can first take this finger and point in the direction of your first vector. You can then take your middle finger and point at the direction of your second vector and then 
whatever direction your thumb is pointing at will be the direction that comes out of the cross product. And the magnitude of the vector that comes out of the cross product can be found using this expression. I'm not going to prove this expression because I've done it before in a 14 minute video I made about four years ago. Not four, like more like two years ago, but, but you get what I mean. But all the cross product things aside, this is how we define magnetic force and magnetic field. So it turns out that we have a moving particle, the force acting upon our moving particle will actually be in a direction which is at right angles to the actual direction of the particle that's moving. And it turns out that the force is also going to be at right angles to the direction of the magnetic field at that particular location. But then we're still left with one big question. What is the magnetic field around a current carrying wire. It turns out that we can use the setup sort of like a cathode ray tube sort of thing and actually work out the actual magnetic field through current carrying wire by seeing which direction our moving charges will be deflected and hence which direction our magnetic force will be in. It turns out that if I have say a current carrying wire moving in this direction and I have a moving charge moving in this direction, the force on our moving charge, our moving positive charge, will be in this direction and we can use the right hand rule magic and then work out that the magnetic field here should be in this direction and if I instead have a moving charge up here still moving in the exact same direction its force will be pointing in this direction you can sort of think of this as the same particle as this but just shift it 90 degrees in this direction so of course the magnetic field will be going in this direction. And you can sort of think about this for virtual particles lying pretty much the entire way around this current carrying wire. And what you'll come up with is it turns out that the magnetic field should be going like this, sort of in a circle. So we can represent magnetic fields around a current carrying wire as looping around the wire like this. Again, we're gonna be using very similar notations to what we use for electric fields rather than representing each point with a certain vector, we're gonna just join all these vectors up and form nice loops like this. So basically, if you're looking at a wire and the current is coming straight at you, then the magnetic field would be curling around the wire anti-clockwise, which is the opposite of what you've seen in the diagram earlier. And a nice way to remember this is to use your right hand again. What you can do is you can stick out your right thumb into the direction of the current, and whichever way your fingers are curling around will be the direction of the magnetic field around that wire. Now you might be wondering why magnetic fields should even exist in the first place, and why it will be caused when we have moving charges in a current. The short answer to this is because of special relativity. And the long answer to this, well, I'm just gonna refer you to two really good books. Now, of course, currently I've been talking about magnetic fields in current carrying wire, but you probably know that there's some other things that has got these magnetic fields as well. One of these are what we call magnets. You might have seen these bar magnets before, and you might know that they have got some sort of magnetic field. But you might look at it and you might see a lack of current in these things, so why can they even have these magnetic fields in the first place? Well, the shortest, maybe not the most accurate answers I can give to you, is that different materials contain these tiny particles called electrons, and these electrons will have a property called magnetic spin, which will mean that it can act like tiny bar magnets pointing either up or down, just because why not? Now in many of these materials, electrons which are pointing up will be paired with electrons that are pointing down, and so the magnetic properties would be cancelled between the electrons. Whereas only in some materials will the electrons be unpaired, which means if the electron is pointing up, there's nothing else to cancel its effect with, hence this magnetic properties will stay. And if we have a lot of these electrons which are pointing up as well, these magnetic properties will be enlarged and can be seen more macroscopic. Now in some materials, the direction of the pointing of electrons will be dependent upon the magnetic field on the outside of the magnet. But in some special materials, in magnets, these electrons will be pointing up or down regardless of what the magnetic field outside is. And there you get bar magnets causing magnetic fields, which you might have seen 
B4. And these magnetic fields could also be seen nicely if you put iron filings on it, or if you run a compass through it and see which way the compass needles would be pointing, because it will be pointing following the direction of the magnetic field.